So with that, I am going to pass the mic over to uh, Brian, who's going to talk about Quiet Skies. Good evening, all. Um, Brian Silverstein. I live on the south end of Lopez Island. Uh, I've been involved with the Quiet Skies uh, organization for um, five or six years and uh, also from the startup of the Sound Defense Alliance. I might mention that this actually was a very noisy day on the south end of Lopez Island uh, and also yesterday evening. It was um, pretty noisy here. So I'm give you a little history. Many of you are probably familiar with Quiet Skies, but I want to share it again because it, it, it basically explains why our organization exists. Just a little history, the uh, Navy Station Whidbey Island was built during World War II as a seaplane base. In the 1970s, the new Prowler jet was deployed to Whidbey and other bases. As bases closed in, 19, in the 1990s, more of the Prowlers moved to Nasui or uh, Whidbey Island. At this point, the loud Prowlers regularly flew over the south end of Lopez and San Juan Island disrupting our pristine rural community. The turning point was a meeting with the base commander who said at the end of the meeting, why don't you just move? There were two outcomes. He was relieved from his command and Lopez started to organize. Excuse me, just for a moment here, letting in a few more people. Fast forward to 2012 in the news that the Navy was deploying the Growler, the loudest jet in the fleet to Whidbey Island. The community and our county council responded, reaching out to federal and state elected officials. The Navy went through a series of environmental analyses, all deficient in our view. In 2014, or until 2014, the Navy's position was that San Juan County was not impacted and meetings were never hold, held on San Juan County. Lopezians got serious. We connected with the citizens of Ebby's Reserve, or CORE. We asked the San Juan County Commission to collect jet noise reports and make the data available to anyone who wanted it. There are now more than 15,000 reports re recorded and Christine will talk more about that. And we asked for the first Navy public meeting on Lopez. In 2016, the Navy proposed adding 36 more growlers and restarted their environmental impact statement. Now we're we were really prepared. We formed Quiet Skies over San Juan County. We created a website and a Facebook, Facebook page. We had a booth at the farmer's market. We were well prepared with community meetings and research by local experts. The meetings at the Lopez Center was packed. Afterwards, we all held postcard writing events. Quiet Skies had a float in the 4th of July parade and pro protests on Lopez and Coopville. Stanley Greenthal wrote and recorded a song, A Sacrificial Zone. It's on our website. In 2019, we were deeply disappointed, but not surprised when the Navy announced that 36 additional growlers would be added, which by the way, they were already purchased before the decision was made. There are lawsuits by the state and core over the deficiencies and errors in the environmental impact statement and the additional jets brought growlers further north into San Juan County, including East Sound on Orcas Island. So what is Quiet Skies doing now? We are an informal group, no officers, not a 501c3. We occasionally ask for donations for printing and mailing. We help form the Sound, De Sound Defense Alliance. We're keeping our community informed through a newsletter, website, and Facebook, and we encourage people to contact our elected officials. We can't meet face-to-face -face now, but through technology, we will stay connected. It's important that all impacted islands participate. So what do we want? You want the Navy to mitigate the noise by technology, changing flight paths, and moving some or more of the, the growlers away. It's no longer term, uh, in the longer term, we want the Navy to disperse growlers among other locations. And later in the meeting, Susan will give you some suggestions. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Ann.
Thank you, Brian. Just going to take a moment to share my a few slides. And if you would get a little closer to the microphone, please. Sure, will do. Okay. Well, thanks to each of you for being here this evening. I'm really, uh, really is important work that we're all doing and we've got to do it together. So I live in Coopville under one of the two growler flight patterns out of the outlying field near Coopville. It's flight pattern number 32. My background's in higher education and lifelong learning has been at my core. I did not expect at this stage of my life to end up really diving in and studying the EA 18 growler uh, and being focused on uh, Navy activities. And here we are, that's probably true for many of us. Um, so I'm really concerned about the impact of the growlers on all of the residents in our region and the living creatures as well. Uh, I'm particularly concerned about children. I'm, I am involved with the Coopville Farm to School program in my community and kids are outside working with their hands in the soil and having growlers fly overhead is not healthy for anyone, particularly children. As you all may know, the Sound Defense Alliance is focused on protecting communities and the, national, and the uh, natural environment from harmful military activity around the Salish Sea, Puget Sound, and the Olympic Peninsula. You also may know that we're a coalition of groups, as Brian mentioned, uh, that includes um, five groups at this point and individuals that have come together to restore the balance between community and military priorities across our region. Uh, we have, have had really strong, exciting work happening for a while, as Brian mentioned, through Quiet Skies through the San Juan Islands. Camino Island has been organizing. Whidbey has been organized for a while. And we're now really excited that there's a lot happening on the peninsula. In Jefferson County, uh, there are, there's a group in, in Port Townsend that formed last fall. And there's some folks in Forks that are now uh, basically reconstituting a group in that part of the uh, peninsula. Uh, we also are excited that there are people in Seattle who are hikers and go to the Olympic Peninsula and are really distressed when they hear growlers flying above. So they too are interested in helping us to organize in Seattle. Um, so uh, you all are familiar with the impacts because you live with them. And they, as we all know, include deafening noise, the impact on uh, toxins in our air and our land and water, uh, there are economic and housing impacts uh, on Whidbey Island and surrounding communities. There's harm to the marine, air, and land species. Of course, our um, uh, beloved orcas threatened and endangered species in particular. The mental and physical impacts are really well documented. There's been plenty of research that shows uh, what, um, what happens when people are exposed to extreme noise. Some of the most recent studies correlate environmental noise with heart related problems like stroke and heart attacks. Uh, the intermittent high volume and high frequency reality of growler noise causes stress. It impacts children's learning and it can trigger PTSD in people who are trying to recover from trauma. I missed that goal. So the long-term goals for the Sound Defense Alliance are is focused on restoring the balance. We want to move the growlers, all of them, to a less harmful place. And um, that, that does not mean closing the base. The base should remain open. Our accomplishments include working with federal elected officials to achieve inclusion of real-time noise monitoring in the annual National Defense Authorization Act. This has been really important to our federal elected officials. And so in 2020, for, for the 2020 NDAA and the 2021 NDAA, this inclusion of real-time noise monitoring by the Navy um, and real-time noise monitoring means it's not average no sound and it's not uh, modeled. This is setting up monitors and measuring the, measuring the noise. Um, so that our elected officials um, are really interested. They really care about this uh, most current information. We know there have been other um, sound studies done, done uh, by national parks, um, done by other community groups. And it's like, okay, we'll do this again because this is really, you know, we will support the Navy collecting this data because this is important to our elected officials. We need to do this. Meanwhile, Sound Defense Alliance also has a noise monitoring project so we've been collecting data around the region as well. 
Um, we've developed strong working relationships with federal, uh, state, and local elected officials. And I'll come back to talking a little more about local elected officials in a bit. We've built a really strong brand as, as recognized opposition um, in, in response to the expansion of the growlers in our area. And we've engaged activists like you all from across the region to get thousands of calls and emails and postcards to our elected officials. And this will continue through this year. We're in a really new chapter. So we have all kinds of really new, of new opportunities. We have a new White, House, new White House administration. There will be new Navy leadership, not only at the Naval Air Station Whidbey Island, as Captain Arnie is moving on, but also with a new Secretary of the Navy, Deputy Secretary of the Navy, Assistant Deputy, all of the Navy brass will be new. Um, and we do have folks like Senator Cantwell who care about asking questions like, do you know about this, this problem? Do you care about this problem? What are you gonna do about this problem? So uh, we are in a new chapter in terms of um, hopefully screening for some folks who do care about the problem and wanna work with us on it. Um, so we've developed really good relationships with federal elected officials and their staff. Um, specifically in the last um, two months, we have met with the staff from uh, Rick Larson's office, Adam Smith's office, Maria Cantwell's office, Pramila Jayapal and Derek Kilmer. And there are more that we will continue to meet with over the next um, uh, month uh, as we uh, run our roadmap by them. And I'll get back, to, I will speak more to that a little later in our program. Um, we have a more powerful Washington state delegation. These folks all are much more powerful on a lot of levels. And finally, we have national partnership opportunities. Part of that has to do with the reality that the F-35s are, be, are being spread to new communities across our country. So not only are they in Burlington, Vermont, they're also going to be in um, Wisconsin and in Alabama. Uh, and there are national groups like quiet communities that, are, that happen to be focused more on commercial jets, but they focus on noise and we're working on collaborating with them. They are a national group and they have the ear of elected officials um, in DC as well. So our voices are being heard and we're at the table. Um, our goals for 2021 to 2023 include implementation of the roadmap, which is our plan to relocate the growlers. Again, I'll come back to that in a, in a while. Um, building political power <clears throat> by continuing to expand um, our su support of Sound Defense Alliance among all of our elected officials, promoting legislative action by working with our delegation on real-time noise monitoring, health impact studies, and the relocation of growler activity. Um, I just wanna say a note here about working with our delegation on the real-time noise monitoring. The Navy has um, said that they will, they, they've made it pretty clear that they basically wanna use this data to uh, essentially reinforce the data that they've collected through modeling and averaging. So it's important to our elected officials that, we that the data that they collect is done genuinely and that, it is, that they're held accountable and there's transparency. Um, we're having some problems with that. Again, I'll come back to that. So continuing to build. So part of our role is to hold their feet to the fire in terms of transparency and accountability. And so continuing to build a strong, vital and really financially sound organization through our base building, our board development, fundraising and staffing. We do have a lot going on, as Susan mentioned. So May 26th, here we are. Uh, Jefferson County, June 15th, we'll be gathering with folks from uh, Jefferson County. Whidbey Island is on July 7th. Uh, that's a tentative date. Um, Camino Island is set for the 27th of July. Um, Forks may be in there in early August. We're working on that. And um, we are hoping, we're planning to hold a regional community meeting. The question is, do we do this by Zoom? Do we do this face-to-face -face or part, or some part face-to-face, -face, some whatever. Anyway, we're figuring that out. And that will be probably late August, possibly early September. Our goal would be to have one of our federal elected officials speak at that event. So stay tuned. Uh, our grassroots plan is to build a strong and diverse regional power base to partner with Washington officials and other organizations like the National Parks Conservation Association, community leaders, public health advocates, and the business communities around our region and work our congressional staff and elected officials. So there are lots of ways to act. Um, and these include connecting with your local elected officials 
encouraging them to, to get join with us uh, to do outreach and build support in, in this in your community. So um, continuing to invite people to join the Sound Defense Alliance. Fundraising activities and events, just to note that we have uh, just started today our spring fundraiser. Um, and media outreach, as well as outreach in Seattle. These are all ways that you can get involved and I will be touching back on this uh, later in our program. So thanks. Brian, I believe I'm next. So can you put up some slides? While Brian's doing that, my name's Christine Curlin. I am the person who uh, collects the data and produces reports. So Anne, I'd like you to mute, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, what you're looking at in this first slide is perhaps something you're familiar with. This is the front page of the Quiet Skies website. Um, we put many things in our, in our website. But what I'm pointing out today is that there is a tab at the top of the website called Report Jet Noise. And when you hit that, it pulls down the how to report jet noise and the jet noise summaries. So I wanted to point that to you first. Next slide, Brian. Okay. So when you click on that tab of report jet noise here on the left-hand side of this slide, you're going to see um, a page that gives you the actual URL, the address of the reporting website. Um, the note on this is that San Juan County um, Council approved this website a number of years ago. And then about two years ago, expanded the use of it to all of the region. On this page that you see on the left-hand side, we also include some hints on how to deal with the um, noise reporting. On the right-hand side of this slide is a representation of the uh, San Juan County reporting website. And I've got some arrows there that I'd like to point you to. The first one is the time. Now you're wondering, why am I going through this? I look at all of the data on a bi-monthly basis and I try to collate it. And I'm going to offer you some hints that frankly will make my job a little easier. One is the time. The time will automatically go to a time when you are right on the computer. If you're reporting a noise event that occurred at a different time, you can click on that and it'll drop down and you can, can put in the correct time of the noise event that you are reporting. And then as you see, you get to choose the type of aircraft and the loudness. Then you get to the map. I have found that some of you are confused about how to use the map to report the location of the noise event. Um, I'm pointing on the left hand arrow there to a little icon where it will automatically go to your location. So if you hit that little icon there, it'll automatically move to your location. But what if your location is not where you heard the noise event? I see some reports where people say, I'm at the ferry and uh, I'm getting a lot of noise, but I bet you that they're maybe reporting that at home. So what you can do is toggle on the map and when you click on a place, it will automatically identify that as the location. Moving down further on that website, comments. Your comments are great. And the more detailed and descriptive you can be is helpful. It's particularly helpful to know uh, when you heard it, what you heard, and where you heard it, particularly where you heard it. That is so helpful. So that's a quick guideline to when you get to that website, the noise reporting website, that you can hit on some of those pieces of information. I find it can take as little as 20 seconds to make a report and sometimes about a minute if you're pondering what kind of comments you wanna make. Brian, can you go to the next slide? So what does this add up to? As I pointed out, the jet noise summaries are on our website. We send them out every two months. 
we send these reports to elected officials and to other folks who are interested in receiving them. So as I said, you can go to the website and see them. This page shows you some samples of what's in our reports. For example, one of the top middle uh, uh, chart shows you that actually we've been really recording a lot of reports now over the years. It's really jumped up. Why has it jumped up? It's jumped up because we expanded the reporting from just San Juan County to the region. And the region has contributed a lot of noise reports. To the right of that, you're seeing a map that's called a heat map. This is new, and I thank Sarah Blake, who's been doing this. The heat map shows, and I'm sorry it's reduced, re reproduced so tiny away on your screen, but the heat map shows where the noise is, is more and more uh, reported. Down below it is what I call the dot map. The dot shows the actual reports for the past almost two years. And it's important to know that dots overlay other dots. Some, some locations, they just keep reporting and there's dot over dot over dot. But you can see the intensity of those dots and where we're getting the reports from. On the left-hand side is just a sample of some of the charts that we do. Uh, this happens to be a chart that shows the breakdown of the noise um, by whether you're in San Juan County or out of San Juan County. Then on the very right is just a sample of what I do include in the report, which is all of the comments. I see that there's a question and I will answer that when we get to the questions. Um, so uh, let me hold on that. Uh, in sum, what I've tried to show you is how you can get to the reporting site, what the reporting site looks like, and what we gather the data into and then report out in. Um, I um, thank you all for your reporting and um, I hope that our reports are making a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. And now we're gonna have Anne talk a little bit more about the roadmap. And you need to unmute. Thanks, Susan. And thank you, Christine. I just want to acknowledge all the work that you do. And I read those reports when you send them out. And they are really uh, powerful. Um, it really uh, reminds me of the range of impacts um, when people are trying to work and they can't work. Um, they're worried about losing um, a, a client because of the jet noise and uh, children can't sleep and certain experiences that may not be in my immediate world, but it's a really uh, important collection of data and comments. So thanks, Christine, and to Sarah Blake too. So the roadmap. So I mentioned earlier that the Sound Defense Alliance has been working on a roadmap to restore the balance. It's not yet a public document. We're currently presenting the roadmap in each of these meetings with our federal elected officials because we want to get feedback from them and make adjustments um, based on their input. So once it's finalized, you will certainly be among the first to receive it. But meanwhile, I just want to highlight some of the elements of it. So uh, we, really, we want to work with the Navy on long-term solutions that both meet the Navy's need to train while protecting the communities, our communities, the environment, and um, endangered species. So the Navy's developing technologies that we know accomplish the electronic warfare mission with a much reduced impact on local communities. So SDA has confidence that the US Navy can meet the needs of national defense and be a good community partner. Uh, so we want to partner with them to help them protect the places they're designated to defend and to achieve lo our, the long-term solutions for unacceptable noise impacts on all of us, the people that they serve. Um, so the objectives are multiple, but I'm just going to highlight a couple of them. One is to ensure the intent of the congressional implementation of the National Defense Authorization Act, as I mentioned earlier, the real-time noise monitoring study that engages public stakeholders. These are intentions that will engage public stakeholders, provide raw data throughout the process for us to be able to analyze that data for independent analysis. Um, and accurately records the actual noise impacts on Northwest Washington. 
So one of our concerns is that the Navy has said that they plan to release the data at the same time that they release the report. So this is a piece that we are working on with our elected officials right now, asking them to work with the Navy to ensure that we have access to that data in advance of any final report so that um, it is indeed um, true to what our uh, congressional delegation wants. Um, we also, another objective is to preserve three national treasures, um, the Olympic National Park, Eby's Landing National Historical Reserve and the San Juan Islands National Monument. And a third, what I'm, a third objective I wanna mention is to restore the balance between military and community needs, just you know, keep saying this over and over in terms of the balance in Northwest Washington and improve the military civilian partnership. Um, so we know that the Navy is continuing to develop um, innovative technology. So we really wanna support that movement in that direction, not just uh, because they're less costly, but they're also more climate friendly, things like drones. Um, and so that is certainly a part of what we are supporting in terms of the directions the Navy may go. Um, and uh, so, that, so we have a five-step plan that ends with reciting the entire um, uh, EA-18 Growler mission, ensuring that they are, all of those Growlers are located in other uh, locations. Um, so I'm sure there may be questions and I, that's enough for now. So we'll see um, if, uh, if you have questions about that, we can address them later. Thanks. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, everybody. Um, so now it's time to hear from you. And I want to just uh, re-emphasize our guidelines, which is to listen to each other with good intent and participate with respect and participate at a level that works for you. And I want to also add that if you find that you have a question tomorrow or the next day or later on, you can most definitely email through the Quiet Skies website. And I'm not sure if Brian, Ann or Christine are gonna have their email up in the chat or not, but definitely you can get uh, a response through Quiet Skies or Sound Defense Alliance. I would encourage people to send their <coughs> comments or, <coughs> excuse me. The send website. Your comments or questions to Quiet Skies or Sound Defense Alliance. Yep. And knowing that some people here tonight are present by way of their telephone, we're going to give a little bit of time in a little while for those of you who are on the phone, because uh, we know that you can't see other people here on the screen raising their hands and just thought it might be a little bit more orderly if we had a little section of the Q&A for um, for people uh, participating on the phone. And, and as you speak, what we would like to know is your name, where do you live, what island, what part of the island is really important, how are you impacted by the growlers, what do you feel would be a good solution, what would you like our organizations to be doing, and then if you have a, part, uh, a question aimed at a particular speaker, please identify that speaker too. And we'll just um, let it go, unmute yourself as you. So I think we, our, our plan was to first go through questions that are put in the chat, because mm -hmm. it allows us to um, combine ones that are together. And True. then once we get through that, and I would encourage people to do that, we already have a few. One actually started about two minutes after the start of the meeting, so it'd probably be a good place to start on that, which was, um, what things are you working about to mitigate the noise impacts on the community and, and address some of that? I'd like to add a few other items as well, things that have been discussed for years. One of the things that we experienced in the last 24 hours is the engine run-ups the rumbling sound that we hear typically on the south end of Lopez Island and San Juan Island, um, which you just absolutely uh, not. Um, here we are 12 miles away from Alt Field where the engines are taking off from and they're vibrating houses here on Lopez Island. There is technology called hush houses to de deflect the um, noise upward rather than out. 
And the Navy has talked about that probably for five years at least, and they have not spent a penny on that. So that's something that they can do at relatively low cost, has no impact on um, the mission, and could help our communities that are impacted um, by that. Another is um, for the jets to fly at appropriate elevations as they come over the islands. Understand when they take off and they land, they need to be certain elevations so they can safely land and take off. But there's no reason for jets to cross um, Lopez Island uh, under a thousand feet. And supposedly that's not outside in their plan. So there are things that could be done at no cost and immediately to mitigate that that has not happened. So maybe I'll, I'll see if there's any comments from um, um, the other participants here about other things um, that could help. Brian, there was a question in the chat for Christine, uh, which is um, exactly what do you mean by the importance of where you heard the noise or the reports? Things like in the yard or in my house. Thank you. Uh, what really is valuable is to clarify if you're on North Lopez or in the Lopez Village, or if you're in East Sound, or if you're on Shaw, or if you're at the ferry dock in Anacortes. Uh, that, that simply helps uh, me assure that the location is reported accurately. But second of all, it is part of the message. It's where did you hear it? Um, we can report that it's inside San Juan County or outside San Juan County, but your comment makes it a little more specific as to where the impact is. So if you're able to report general location, great. We do not need your address. <laughs> I would Thanks. add an another comment about the um, question of in indoors or outdoors. Um, in the environmental impact statement, there are certain assumptions made about the um, attenuation of noise inside of schools, hospitals, and people's homes. But as far as I know, there's, there have been no modeling to actually, or actual measurements to see with that, um, where people experience that. So if you can report on whether you're indoors or outdoors, it'd be really helpful for us to gather data to pass on to the Navy. Uh, thank you, Brian, because uh, you'll notice if you actually read some of the reports that some people are doing decibel monitoring and they will report decibel inside my house is da 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 da. And, and that, ha that has some impact. So what, what the comment really does is it tells us what's bothering you, mm -hmm. where it's bothering you and how it's bothering you. Thank you, thank you both. So there are a few more questions in the chat, but I see that Sarah also has had her hand up for a while. So I would like to ask Sarah to unmute and um, ask in question or comment, please. So, and before we go there, um, I just um, want to respond, Susan, to the question about, is there a 501c3? Yeah, I was gonna get to that. Donate? And to just acknowledge that yes, the Sound Defense Alliance is a 501c3, and that is uh, certainly a, will welcome your contributions. Thanks. Yep, got it. Sarah, please. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm I live in Victoria, BC, Canada, um, and I just happened upon um, this uh, Zoom meeting, and it really caught my attention because. Myself and my neighbors and all kinds of people here hear the growlers up here. Um, we're near the water, but um, I didn't know that there was anything, you know, initiated or going on. And I guess my question is, um, what, I mean, what as a Canadian, do you know if there's anything we can do besides using your website to report the noise? Um, have you heard of any initiatives through Canada or, um, because it's terrible it's terrible up here as well so sarah thank you for for pointing that out i'm not aware of organizations in on vancouver island but um you're certainly welcome to develop one and we would certainly share experience um, with that and sound defense alliance i think could help you i think you are always welcome to um to write to the navy because you're being impacted by their act activity. And I think you need mm -hmm. to contact your own government and yeah. be sure that they are aware of the impacts on, on your community. So thank you for raising the comment. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, I, know Sarah, yeah. Uh, I have friends who live over in Victoria and I, I just know from years of conversation with them um, that they are aware of it, that I know some of them have contacted 
uh, their local elected people. But I believe there's mm -hmm. also been some articles and some letters to the Times colonist. And so you may you may find that that's another way to to surface it within your community. Yeah, yeah, I've seen those stuff in the Times Colonist. I, I don't think they <laughs> they affect the U.S. government very much. It's just a local newspaper, and it doesn't do much. So we feel a little helpless up here. Um, you know, not being citizens of the U.S., we don't. Uh, you know, our voices aren't really heard, and and yet we're very affected by these. Um, it, it, it's different as pockets. Uh, some people don't hear it in certain areas, but uh, other people hear it all the time. And, you know, obviously, you know, it's, it, it goes on for days, all day and stuff. So, yeah, mm -hmm. just okay. happy to, happy to, I didn't know your website existed. I will sort of spread it around and hopefully you'll get some more reports from up here. Thank you so much. So, and has you. a comment on that too. Thanks, Susan. Yeah, Sarah. So I just want to say that we'd be happy to work with you to start a group um, in in Van, in Victoria. And uh, I will send you my email address, and we will and just feel free to contact me directly, and we'll work on um, starting a group if that because I think that's one of the ways to um, really begin to make a difference. So I'll, I'll, great. I'll yeah. Email. Thank you, you. Thank you. That's excellent. We Thank have a you. question from Jen. I'm going to read it. I am intimidated by calling the Navy report line. It feels like it just pinpoints me and the aggression I have seen is challenging. Example, laughing and other comments by those in Navy uniform on the Facebook pages that should be safe. So that's a comment that I'm sure is shared by many. Any response? Uh, Jen, Jen, one of the reasons we encourage the reporting on, on our website is because what when you do call the Navy report line, it, it can be a good way to let off some steam, but it's not transparent. We have, we have no information about um, what they do with that, uh, with the phone calling and where it goes and what difference it makes. Uh, at the very least, our reporting is solid data. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's really important to getting your voice out there. And we have a question from Dawn. Has the holding pattern changed in recent months with the great number of growlers? Seems like we're hearing more noise in Olga and Orcas generally. Well, Susan, I suggest, I'll suggest that you um, offer what your experience has been over the last two years since the additional growlers are added. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, you saw the dot map, Orcas. I think the dot map a couple of years ago would have been you would have seen some empty spaces on Orcas a few years ago. Um, I there's a wonderful slide that maybe one of you can bring up on the flight pattern around Orcas, what it's supposed to be, and um, as you pointed out, Don, they also the Growler pilots deviate from the flight pattern. Um, what you're hearing is the incredible increase in growlers and the lack of uh, being the lack of compliancy with what they agreed to do in the first place. Um, the other team members have more data on that in terms of percentage of uh, growlers added over what was approved, et cetera. But most definitely Orcas has become much, much louder. And um, I, I know if, when I hike an obstruction pass or visit friends in Olga, or even go to the top of Mount Constitution, it's, mm -hmm. it's endless some days. So I'm wondering, Brian, do you happen to have that slide? Actually, I don't, I'm sorry. I, don't, I, I would have to do some digging to find it. Okay, well, I, 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 I have it. I have it. It, it, it would just take a moment or two. Maybe I'll bring it up in a, in a, in a pause a little bit later. And, and if you don't have time, um, then uh, you all can forward that slide to me and I'll get it on our Quiet Skies website. Okay, great. Hey, Good. Susan, you're a co-host, so you can pop it up if you find it. Okay, okay. Brian, can you continue with the question in the chat sure. then I'll bring this up? So uh, one question, uh, actually, hold on just a second. We just lost the view of the chat. How do we know what kind of airplane we are hearing? So that's a, a great question. Um, 
sometimes you can look up in the sky and see. But I think after living here for a long time, you'll understand uh, or be aware of the difference between um, the military aircraft and commercial aircraft, which do not fly over here very often, or the smaller ones. I remember at a um, meeting with the Navy base on Lopez Island one time, uh, someone from the base said, well, how do you know they're ours? And the response from one of our council members was, if it's not yours, we have a much bigger problem. Um, I generally tell by the persistence of the noise. And, and sometimes when I don't know, I write, I don't know. But I generally make the comment, I don't know what it is, but it is not a commercial flight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. The growlers move my guts. The other jets are ones that I grew up with. That's how I know the difference. Comment here about uh, our letters to elected officials are going unanswered, even when we ask for a response. Should we continue writing? Are our efforts working? Do they matter? So answering the last part, I'd say in general, yes, because we would not have gotten the language added to the Defense uh, Appropriation Act in the last two years if um, our elected officials were not um, uh, responding to us. So it does matter. If your particular um, directive, uh, excuse me, elected official is not responsive, I think you need to have a conversation. You know, in addition to writing letters, you might make phone calls when they have a, um, a public meeting. I think you need to address that directly to them and tell them that you're um, frustrated um, with their, uh, how they're representing you. And, uh, but I, I encourage you to, to, to raise your voice and let your elected officials know that this is an important issue for you and your community. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll say, I can add to that, that um, when I have written, I've also gone on each individual's website and submitted my letters electronically. And I have gotten responses that way. Um, as you can imagine, other people and other staff people open the mail and uh, with COVID, especially this last year, it's been really hard to uh, feel like we're being heard about the growlers, but um, just keep on pushing, keep on pushing. I wanna echo that uh, Susan and Brian, just to acknowledge that, um, just to, to the messages that we encourage people to um, put forth are your stories, the impact on you, what are you experiencing, um, what kind of damage and harm is um, part of your life, and uh, what do you want? You want to relocate the growlers. So really putting forth those messages um, about the impact and uh, what you want, and that you want you know this particular elected official to join with you to ensure that these are these uh, growlers are relocated so they yeah, and i would echo that yes it's so important to keep on keeping on and um you know i think uh there are people like patty patty murray is is notorious for not responding to this issue she will not respond to this issue um everyone else tip, pretty typically over time will respond rick larson has definitely turned a corner. He was not someone we could count on. He has definitely changed his tune and he got very involved with the National Defense Authorization Act um, both, both years, but particularly last year, last winter, 2020, um, for the National Defense Authorization Act for this year, for 21, and took a stand that surprised us. He was actually got engaged. He's not where we'd like him to be, but he's moved. And I just think that's important. And that's because of you all. It's really directly connected to, um, and it's connected to the work that we're all doing. And please remind them that they are receiving the, those data reports. So you can turn their mind back to the data reports that they have gotten every two months. Question about what are our options concerning protecting the airspace with the FAA? Federal Aviation Administration. I'm not an aviation expert, but my understanding is that the relationship between the FAA and, um, and the military is really for a safety one, avoiding conflicts between aircraft from a safety standpoint. And as far as I know, they have no uh, control whatsoever re regarding impacts on the communities. There actually are agreements between the state of Washington 
and the Department of Defense about uh, uh, aircraft flights. And that's not just our um, region, but ac across the whole state of uh, um, Washington. And that is actually a great question. We've raised that question to the state about um, should those memorandums of uh, uh, agreement um, be modified in the future because of the, comp uh, the uh, impacts on the communities. But as far as I know, the FAA has no direct impact on the, the flight uh, pl uh, plans for the uh, aircraft. I see a question for Anne. Um, please explain how noise monitoring is really of any value or use considering that the tsunami of co complaints from citizens has not moved the needle to our elected officials? Yes, really good question. So noise monitoring is important because the Navy has claimed that the average noise that we're all exposed to is probably in the 60s, maybe low 70s. And we all know that it can exceed 100, 110 decibels. Um, and uh, so, so, so it's important to have the facts. It's important to have the truth out there. So that's one piece. But the other element of this is that this is data that our elected officials are requesting. They're now requiring. And so in terms of them getting the facts and understanding what we all know, I mean, how many times have we written and said, this is what we're exposed to, but we also know that it's really important um, for them to have the facts. And this is the way to do that. Uh, we found the map, all right. Great. Yes, I think I embarrassingly led everybody through my photos when I was looking for it. I apologize. <laughs> but here it is. And so you can see how they are uh, altering their flight pattern. If we're hearing them all the way up into East Sound, the meeting I was at where this was uh, explained was that pilots are uh, supposed to be coming around. There's some technical word for it when they loop around to come back to base, but they're, they're deviating. They're coming way up into East Sound. They're going way up over here. Then, and you can see that they're going way up into uh, the Victoria area as well. So this is, what the, um, per, this is what the flight patterns are supposed to be. And looking at that map, I'm not seeing a sound is not under the path. Right. Yeah. And yet, if you're sitting in East Sound or at the library, the library will shake. They had nine flights over the south end of Lopez Island just today. Yeah, it's a really, really loud day today. So I'm going to stop sharing now. But maybe I, that I think it's I think it's worthwhile to note um, that the flight pattern certainly is what it is when you have the flights going directly over you. But what I what I ascribe to in my unscientific way is that we have so much water here that the sound carries. Mm -hmm. And so it could be south of you, east of you, west of you, yet it feels very close and it's penetrating your home. Sometimes it is hard to pinpoint the actual location of of a plane, but what you hear is the noise and feel the vibration. Mm -hmm. I would note that there's there's no path that goes directly over the south end of, of Lopez and we can regularly see them as well as hear them flying over. So they're not following the paths that are described uh, in their flight plans and what they use for analysis in the environmental impact statement. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we drop this, um, we have some more questions. Another question about how to tell the difference between um, different kinds of military aircraft. It's actually pretty straightforward because the only jets that we see that I'm aware of from Whidbey, of course, are the Growlers and the Poseidon, the uh, P-8, which is the, their new um, submarine uh, finder uh, aircraft, which is basically a Boeing 737. And they don't come over and over again. They're not doing um, aircraft uh, takeoff and landing or, or CLP practice, and they're nowhere near as loud. So if you hear something that's loud and growling, it's a growler. So there is a lot, a lot more in the chat. I want to do a um, give. 
we'll just pause for a moment and see if anybody who is joining by phone would like to ask a question or comment. And if so, please just go ahead, unmute. Maybe not. I well, have a comment, but my picture disappeared and I don't know why. My camera is working and all of a sudden, this is Naomi Aldord. Okay. So Go I'm ahead, sorry. Naomi. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> I made myself invisible and then visible and the camera is on, but I don't know. It's not there. So I wanted to... Uh, to ask more about the relocation idea, because it seems to me like the only solution, uh, considering that we also have air pollution, not just noise pollution. Uh, my background is I lived on Lopez and escaped because of the noise to the north part of Orcas, where I still hear it. I just took a walk. I really needed a walk and rushed back home because of the constant rumble. And it's often, you know, they don't have to fly above East Sound to have the rumble here. I think even when they're on the ground, just running the engines, um, it's, you know, if you, if you have a, an open line toward them, wherever you are, you hear it. You hear it on beaches. You try to have a hike, you can a hike with a friend. A month in advance, you finally hike and go to some beautiful beach and you have to leave because it's unbearable. But that's just about the noise. I think we have a big pollution problem because the, the amount of pollution these planes are, you know, it's like just because we're disturbed only by the noise, I think we should not ignore the fact that we're trying to live here with ocean air, clean air. And of course there is the whales and there is all the habitat and all kinds of stuff. And uh, the pollution from airplanes is one of the greatest that we can have. Uh, we don't have as clean an air as we could living in a place um, this remote. Um, and that's, that has to be addressed as well. But I want to hear more about the, the relocation. Uh, what, what possibilities, because that's to me is the only answer. All the other stuff is like lip service, you know, okay, well, you know, we'll do something electronic so it's less noise, we'll, we'll stay in a higher elevation. Okay, it's still polluting, it's still noise, maybe a little less, it's still wrong. Mm -hmm. And I want to say one more thing uh, before um, Anne, you speak to that. Um, you know, there is, I think it's important to address that. When I called originally on Lopez, I called their line to say there's too much noise here. I was woken up by it at 2 a.m. on my second day on Lopez. Like, oh my God, you know, I moved to the quiet and this is what's happening. And they told me their, their famous line, hey, it's the sound of freedom. Mm -hmm. And I think that has to be addressed because I think their psychology is that somehow they have more justification and what I'd like the conversation to bring up is that business is business. I don't have to agree that war is ever a solution to anything. I grew up in war. I recognize war planes within right away. It gives me a stomach ache on the spot and nausea. And, you know, I ran from it all the way to America. And then I came to Lopez, ran to Orcas and you know, they, they think, oh, we're doing something great. But if it was a factory that pollutes the air, uh, creating sandals or creating something else wonderful, it doesn't give right to, to create noise and pollution for residential community. They have to move that operation to a desert island, not, <laughs> or not an island. That has hey, Naomi, to be uh, thank you for the comments. and. I uh, would like um, Anne to re reply to your question about yeah, uh, moving the jets. Thank you. Hey, um, Anne, before you do, and thank you, Brian, I'm wondering if you would like to also incorporate two of the questions here about loss of property value. Um, I think that your comment to Naomi might be able to touch on those, uh, the, that as well. Um, just, I don't know if you're looking at the chat, Anne, but 
um, how can we expand the number of people on orcas who care? That's one question. And then the economic piece, it's an economic issue for homeowners who could lose resale value if there's lots of noise. Can we involve homeowners associations, et cetera? So we're moving, we're actually kind of to the later part of our meeting, but um, somebody else also brought up the uh, loss of value in, um, in housing. So, so please, Anne, um, go for it. Yeah, the the, um, the the sound of freedom piece that you raised, Naomi, is a um, powerful divide and conquer tactic. And uh, really what's really important is for us, is to, for us to acknowledge that, that um, we, are we are all patriotic, patriotic and we're not going to allow that allow particular that line to divide us, divide us. Um, that we all, that we all, we all care about, about our country. And, and there's something really going on in your sound. I'm not sure what it is. Okay. Is, is there anything you can do to kind of tweak it? Yeah, let me see if there's something that, that was that was good. Okay, just clicked on something. All right. <laughs> so is it better staying better? Great. Okay. Thanks. All right. So uh, divide and conquer. We don't want to go there. We don't want to be um, uh, um, in a polarizing kind of a role. And so it's important not to buy into that. Um, but to be able to acknowledge that we are all Americans and we care and we are uh, being used as collateral damage and that is not okay. The Navy, like any other branch of our military, is unfortunately um, at least can act in a way that they are above the law. And uh, so your point about business is, is business um, is a tricky one for them because they essentially see themselves as not have and, and the way our laws are constructed and our government is constructed like the FAA, they are indeed not governed in any way by the FAA. Um, so there's a whole, uh, so there, there is a reality to their uh, uniqueness at the same time, we need to uh, continue to push hard to get the, the, I'm just thinking about this climate change emissions piece that's in here around um, the importance of um, researching and providing information again to our elected officials and the public about the connection between emissions and climate change. Brian has, uh, we've got a number of great uh, researchers who are starting to work on some of these issues in terms of research. We've got a couple new volunteers who are diving in to some of these questions. Um, jumping back to where to relocate them and the importance of relocation, that's one of our month, the, our, it's not our job to figure out where they're going to go. It's our job to push the Navy and our elected officials to develop a plan to relocate them. So there are a number of options and places, but we're not spending time on that because that's the Navy's job to figure out where they're going to put them. Um, but our, and there are options that are definitely less uh, impactful in terms of uh, both communities that would be impacted as well as sensitive environments. Um, the issue around, I'm uh, just looking at the question for homeowners, um, and uh, I think that this is a great idea in terms of engaging homeowners associations, restaurants, hotels, B&Bs. Uh, it, it certainly can affect business, and it certainly is impacting some homeowners' uh, val value of their homes. So, Don, um, what I would encourage you to do um, and, and I'll get to this at the very end too, is just to encourage everyone to think about what you would like to do to engage with these issues. So one would be, I'd like to work on this issue of, of uh, resale, lost resale value and wanna be a part of a group that's looking into that. Um, so thanks Don for raising that. Yeah, and Don also uh, as the coordinator here on Orphans, what I've noticed is that there are far more voices that want to continue to make this an issue about the sound of freedom than voices that are uh, speaking up. Uh, maybe because we live on the same island, you and I can have a conversation offline about contacting some of these other organizations, homeowners, etc., and take it forward with some more momentum. Um, do I remember, Brian and Cynthia, that on Lopez, the real estate agents have, uh, during the sale issue, um, a clause about the noise? I don't remember that clearly. They and do Cynthia, on Whidbey. I know they do on Whidbey and they do in Anacortes, uh, for sure. 
Lopez Island does have one. I'm not, I think maybe all but one of the, um, one of the realtors has it. And I think Friday Harbor, one of the realtors does have it. So yes, we, we put a clause in many years ago. There's an interesting um, question here. How do we report jet fuel smells when the growlers dump fuel over the water? Um, I have seen that in the, in the reports made uh, to the website. So I've seen some reporting on that. Does anybody else have other places that gets reported? No, it's denied by the Navy. I would say that um, it's important. I would encourage you to contact um, the Sound Defense Alliance. Uh, go onto our website and send us an or and send us an email or to our webmail address and tell us report it to us because I think we want to continue to collect that information. So um, yeah, keep us keep us posted. Hi, uh, Susan. Can I ask a question? Of course. Um, I'm, my name is Robert, my, uh, my wife, Tracy, we live in, in Coopville, in town. Um, so you can, uh, you already know the level of noise that we're being exposed to. Um, my kind of have the question I have to pose to Anne is that um, while I would, I would not shed a tear to see them, the growlers completely relocated. Um, I also am sympathetic to the fact that we, would we simply just be moving this catastrophe to someone else's neighborhood. Now, having said that, um, I try to keep in mind that every single citizen of the United States is, a, is afforded the protection that our military of, offers, but yet so few of us have to endure any, any sort of uh, impact or inconvenience or disturbance for that said protection. And I, of course, I just simply think that's not fair. Will anything be ever done about that? No. But is there an option or is it even being discussed to your, to your knowledge about just simply decreasing the number of, of squadrons at Whidbey? So basically, you know, it would only be fair in my opinion to spread them out, no, no matter what the cost, spread them all throughout the United States if you have to. But if you have two squadrons here and two squadrons there, it would severely lessen the impact that we're all having to feel. Um, and then, you know, spread the love, so to speak. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thanks, thank Robert. you. Yeah, so, th so thank you, Robert, for raising that um, question. And, I, and, you know, we have, as I mentioned, we have not talked about, we recognize it's, it's the military's job, it's the Navy's job to come up with the plan for what they're gonna do whether they would find three other places and relocate in three places or two or whatever. Um, we share your concern that it's like, don't want this, don't want to wish this on anybody. Um, and would really, uh, you know, the point of relocating them is to have, an, to really significantly reduce the impact. Um, meanwhile, there are drones in the pipeline. We know drones are in the pipeline. Um, and we also know that Boeing has a five year um, giant fund to um, make improvements on the growler. So, uh, you know, we, we, you know, pushing for innovative technology um, is a big part of, I mean, reducing the overall number of these squadrons over time is a, is a really important goal. And I, I'm glad you raised that, Robert. Thanks. It's, um, yeah, we don't have a, a magic solution or idea to put forth. And again, you know, they will be working on that, but that's, that is a part of our legislators jobs too. Susan, is this a good time for us to um, go to the summary? Well, we have one more and then I think that we can. So this is from Jen who had to leave, but she says when, when we are able to move these jets, um, the Everett commercial site and all other aircrafts are already getting bad. Will this open the skies for more commercial flights? I'm not an expert on that, but I believe that the um, the routes that are held for the military will probably will, will remain because if as long as Whidbey Island is open, there are going to be times when jets are coming in and out, and so they will still have to separate between the military and the uh, commercial and general aviation. So. 
I don't know that um, the uh, commercial will actually expand at all. It's a great question. Don't have a definitive answer, but it's not clear that it would ha have an impact. Thank you, Brian. I would like to direct everybody to Sharon Abros, um post in the chat. She's become a uh, an official of some sort. I'm not exactly sure here in the county, but an elected official. And she's got some very good um, uh, tips to add to your letters about climate change and emissions that might find a more sympathetic ear than, than noise. So yes, I think it is a good time. Thank you all for your engagement with this. We will have more meetings. And again, I just want to remind you to stay in touch through the Quiet, Quiet Skies website if you have other questions or comments. So I would like to pass it over to Anne again for our summary about what you can do and, um, and, uh, and a little bit more about the roadmap, I think. Yeah, I will just uh, conclude with um, an acknowledgement that uh, it's really great to be able to have these conversations with folks and really listen to your experience and to think together. Um, and I, again, encourage you to use the chat before we wrap up and think about what you might like to do in terms of being involved with this, uh, this work, because it takes all of us. Um, and that can be as simple as I'd like to have a postcard party this spring or summer, or I'd like to um, uh, help organize the event that's going to happen at the end of the summer, or um, I will write a letter to the editor. So uh, just think about what you would like to do. So be active. Um, uh, go to our websites and join our organizations. You don't need to pay any money to do that, but become a member so you get our newsletters and, um, and are informed. Uh, donate, donate, donate. Of course, it's, uh, um, we are in the midst, as I mentioned, of our just initiating our spring fundraiser. We have a $10,000 fund, matching fund, uh, thanks to the generosity of several individuals. And so we are, our goal is to raise another $10,000 to match. So help us make that goal. And you can do that by going to our website and donating. Um, contact your elected officials, don't stop. And as we um, develop a set, a set of uh, priorities in terms of community consensus among our elected officials and folks like you all, we will be organizing our efforts to, for people to contact your elected officials and basically have them sign on to a letter that says, these are the most important things, short-term and long-term around the growlers. And, um, and uh, I, as an elected official, as a local uh, city council, county council member, mayor, uh, stand with you. So that is um, in the forefront here. So you'll stay tuned, you'll hear about that. Um, volunteer to be the contact person to help organize in your community. We'd love someone from, the, from San Juan Island, from Shaw. So just um, identify yourself. I'm happy to help organize and we would love to hear from you. Um, don't forget to report, report, report. When you hear the growlers, report on the San Juan County Jet Noise Report website, wherever you are. Um, and uh, contact the Navy. And again, you can go to the go to Quiet Skies or to the Sound Defense Alliance websites for uh, links and phone numbers. And use our websites with, uh, if you think of something tomorrow and you're going, oh, what about this? Send us an email. Uh, we really wanna stay connected and wanna hear from you. And um, we'll be really delighted to, to uh, respond to your inquiries and, um, and think together. So thanks to each of you for all of your time and all of what you have done and continue to do and uh, really appreciate your, um, all your efforts. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. That concludes our meeting. <laughs>